Welcome to the Comparator series. In this video, we will look at using a comparator for use as an A-stable multivibrator, or what's commonly called an oscillator. What is a multivibrator? A-stable multivibrator in which the circuit is not stable in either state. It continually switches from one state to the other. It functions as a relaxation oscillator. Monostable multivibrator in which one of the states is stable, but the other state is unstable or transient. A trigger pulse causes the circuit to enter the unstable state. After entering the unstable state, the circuit will return to a stable state after a set time. This circuit is known as a one-shot. Bistable multivibrator, in which the circuit is stable in either state. It can be flipped from one state to the other state with an external trigger pulse. This circuit is also known as a flip-flop or latch. It can store one bit of information, which is widely used in digital logic and computer memory. This video covers the design of an A-stable multivibrator using a comparator. Oftentimes, a quad comparator is used. Sometimes, three of the four comparator sections may be used with one left over. You may want to use it to do something as trivial as to blink an LED. On the other hand, you may want to make it a clock source for a digital circuit using a single comparator. Here's the circuit. For simplicity, the resistance values of R1, R2, and R3 are equal. At power up, C1 has no charge, so the inverting terminal of the comparator is at zero volts. This makes V out push to the positive rail and is equal to V plus. This essentially puts R1 in parallel with R3, and therefore the threshold voltage VT at the non-inverting terminal is two-thirds V plus. C1 begins to charge through R4. C1 charges until it reaches two-thirds V plus. This makes V out go to zero volts, and R2 is in parallel with R3, which shifts VT to one-third V plus. With V out at zero volts, C1 starts to discharge through R4. Here is a chart of V out, VT, and VC1, the capacitor voltage. At this point, the capacitor charges to the threshold of two-thirds V plus. Then the threshold voltage switches to one-third of V plus, causing C1 to discharge. At the point where the capacitor discharges to one-third V plus, the output goes high and the cycle repeats. As you may know from watching my other videos, I made a pledge. No math steps left behind. In a previous video, I derived the capacitor charging equation. Check it out if you haven't watched it yet. Here's a schematic with a battery E switched on to charge a capacitor through a resistor. The time constant RC is represented by tau. And here's the equation for the capacitor voltage as a function of time. Let's rearrange to solve for time. Let's determine the time it takes to get to the lower threshold voltage, one-third V+. Plus. Rearrange to solve for Vc over E then stick it into our equation for time. This gives us minus the natural log of two-thirds tau. We can use the logarithm reciprocal rule to get rid of the minus sign. The log of the reciprocal of x equals the negative log of x. That gives us t equals the natural log of three-halves tau, which is approximately equal to 0 0.4055. Now for the upper threshold voltage, two-thirds e. Rearrange to solve for Vc over E, and plug Vc over E into our equation for time again. Also using the logarithm reciprocal rule, we get the natural log of 3 times tau. Now we want to get the difference in time between the two thresholds, which is the natural log of 3 tau minus the natural log of 3 halves tau. We can use the logarithm quotient rule where the log of m minus the log of n equals the log of m over n. That gives us the natural log of 2 times tau, which is approximately equal to 0.6931. Here's the 
Here's a chart of the capacitor voltage during the initial charge of the capacitor. When the capacitor has charged to 33%, the time is about 0.4 tau. And at 67%, the time is about 1.1 tau. That gives us a difference of the natural log of 2 tau, or approximately 0.6931 tau. To calculate the cycle time period after the initial charging of the capacitor, the discharge time is T1 and the recharge time is T2. The period, then, is T1 plus T2. Let's make a formula for frequency. T1 and T2 are the natural log of 2 times tau. The period Tp is the sum of T1 and T2. Then factor out tau. We can simplify by using the logarithm product rule, where the log of m plus the log of n equals the log of mn, which gives us tau times the natural log of 4. The frequency is the reciprocal of the period. Replacing tau with rc, we can rearrange to solve for r, since it's common to select the capacitor value first. Speaking of component selection, I did a video on selecting component values for a solemn key active filter. I found this terrific content at kennethkuhn.com. It had a medium resistor and capacitor value as a function of frequency. It also has values for time constants, and for the median capacitance value, it has one microfarad times the square root of the time constant. We will use that as a basis for selection. We can rearrange our period equation to solve for the time constant tau. With a period of one second, the time constant is 0.721 seconds. This gives us a value of 0.849 microfarads. Close to C24 value is 0.82 microfarads. We can use our equation for R4 and let C equal 0.82 microfarad and the frequency be 1 hertz. Plugging those in gives us 897K, and the closest E96 value is 887K. Here's the circuit with all the component values. We will let R1, R2, and R3 be 1 mega ohm, which is big enough to consume minimal power and low enough to well overcome the low input bias current of the TLV3494 at 10 picoamps. Next up, we will modify the circuit to have any desired duty factor other than 50%. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.